Besties now after this. What's up, guys? It's me, Salcedo. Here we go, everyone. What is up? It is May 11th. Welcome to Speak Now Pro Wrestling. I'm your host, Denise Salcedo, and we had a pretty damn good episode of Dynamite here tonight. We started off with a really good wrestling match, lots of storytelling. From there, we went through this entire show that really just flew by very quickly, and we ended with a main event that kind of had us all going, oh my my god like literally every 10 seconds um so we have plenty to get into here today but before we get started everyone first and foremost i want to welcome you guys to the show each and every single week you guys come in here and you guys are great each and every single week um this is a very interactive show please make sure you take part in the chat if you are new do not be shy let your opinions be heard you can leave a comment in the chat box at any time throughout the show and if you want to make sure your voice, your opinion truly gets heard on the show, you are more than welcome to send in a super chat. A super chat gets your comment read on this stream. Additionally, it allows me to stay fed. That is right, because F4W Online does allow me to keep 100% of all proceeds for super chats after YouTube takes their cut. But let's get into this episode of Dynamite. We already got a lot of comments in here, a lot of people. Uh, pretty much putting the show over. Uh, I'm going to kick things off with a comment that we got from M9 Mojeski, who says, Dynamite didn't hold back. Great show. Really great show. Uh, good stuff, guys. So let's get right into it because there's lots to talk about. So... One of the major topics that we're going to be discussing today is the Owen Hart Cup tournament because we had three matches today, two for the men, one for the women, and they were uh, a lot kind of went down. Kicking things up with the opening match, which was Adam Cole versus Dax Harwood. Now, we already knew this was going to be a pretty good match. I mean, going into it, just look at the competitors and it would basically tell you that this match is going to be good. I truthfully did not know what direction they were going to go in with this match. And the crowd was sort of 50-50 on Adam Cole and Dax Harwood. And I legitimately thought, well, they could really go any way, you know. Uh, Dax Harwood, you know, he's appreciated, especially as a, you know, as part of FTR and has been doing great stuff. But Adam Cole is sort of on the main event level where he's going up there. You know, he's having matches with Adam Page, etc. But I still did not know which way they were going to go and who they we're actually going to go with to win this match. Now, I essentially loved it, and I'll tell you why. To me, Adam Cole sort of got, he got the best from out of Dax Harwood here tonight. He sort of, you know, outsmarted the guy. So right in the beginning, he comes in, Adam Cole, and he's kind of you know, very, very confident, a little hot-headed, coming in, and he's, he's kind of being a little bit of a jerk. You know, he's doing that Adam Cole, baby, and he starts off by, like, smacking, slapping the face of Dax Harwood, and Dax Harwood immediately gets, like, fired up, and he's upset about it, and then... Like a couple seconds later, Adam Cole decides to try it again. The Adam Cole baby. But this time, Dax Harwood has has his number and clotheslines him. So right off the bat, we kind of kick things off in a very fun way between these two guys. And what we get here is Adam Cole. There's a moment that was a big game changer in this match. Adam Cole tosses Dax Harwood and the side of his ribs or like the, his side ends up hitting into the ring post just like banging right in there and so his breath is essentially taken out. He's feeling all of this pain immediately after Adam Cole um, puts him through the steel steps gets him in there, he tosses him onto the steel steps as well, adding more pain. They end up sort of going through the perimeter of the ring, and Adam Cole continues to put more pain and pressure on Dax Harwood. Eventually, they get back into the ring, and uh, 
after this, we see like a really nice like back and forth between uh, both of these guys because you see Dax Harwood. Uh, he ends up hitting two German suplexes. And then Adam Cole switches it. He does a German suplex. And then Dax switches it back. So we got a little bit of some back and forth there. After this, there's a slingshot power bomb from Dax to Adam Cole, which was really cool. And this is the moment where he finally gets a breather, where he's finally able to bring Adam Cole down. Uh, this is the first point in this match where Adam Cole is officially down and out. Uh, but then finally, Adam Cole goes for a super kick. Dax blocks it. And then after this, we get a bunch of near falls. And then this essentially leads to the finish. For the finish, we see Dax Harwood lock in the sharpshooter and the crowd is to their feet. They're excited. They all think this is it. But again, the ribs, the side of Dax Harwood comes into play and he's not able to hold to keep the sharpshooter in uh, long enough for Adam Cole to tap out. So instead, Adam Cole locks in the sharpshooter and gets the win. So I liked the storytelling of this match. I loved how, uh, you know, they basically led everything up to these near falls. They built up, you know, uh, they built up this moment, this moment uh, for the sharpshooter, etc. cetera. Uh, Adam Cole wins and now he advances in the Owen Hart Cup tournament. So a really great opener. Uh, I had a good time watching this, guys. And kind of going back and really thinking about this, the body of work that Darks ha that Dax Harwood has put out, not just in, I don't not even talking like the tag team side of things. I'm just ta talking about like the singles matches that he's had on AEW so far have really been uh I'm going to use the word, here we go, stupendous. No, legitimately, uh, he's had a lot of really good one-on-one -on -one matches on AEW, and this was just another one that was sort of added to this. So uh, let's get some thoughts in here, guys. Let's see what people are saying. Once again, uh, if you want to send in a super chat, you can at any point throughout the show. But let's get this comment in here from Cody Santello. Uh, Cody basically says he can't believe that Dax tapped, pointing out that the match was really, really good. RCB says Dax is underrated as how. I wouldn't say he's like underrated because I feel like he's doing such great work with FTR. And like I said, you he's he's constantly having singles matches because all his singles matches are praised are praised for by the AEW fans, by the people watching. And uh, let's not forget that awesome match that he had with Jungle Boy. And like there's so many others. Uh, and again, this was just another one that was added to this as well. And uh, let's see what else we got here, guys. People pretty much uh, putting over this match. I don't think I'm seeing anybody here who did not like this uh, match. Justin Martin says the show had a little bit of everything. Uh, table bumps, uh, move stealing, really good wrestling, Darby doing insane saying crap uh it did have a little bit of everything honestly it really really did and uh let's go ahead and hop into our next match here because they just kind of kept the action rolling so let's keep it going here this one was this one was a little bit different this is a little bit different of a match but it still ended up being really fun i wouldn't put it up there in the same level as adam cole and dax harwood obviously a little bit of uh, different but it was still fun nonetheless and this was cm punk and john silver with adam cole on commentary and this led to some really good stuff so CM Punk comes out. Obviously, he's a heel here uh, tonight in this town, MJF's hometown, etc. And CM Punk comes out, and he's wearing uh, his uh, New York. I'm not. A, I'm not a hockey person, guys. I don't know about sports. So uh, Islanders. Islanders. Okay, he's wearing the jersey. Everybody on Twitter informed me that this was very, very heelish thing to do, and I put two and two together, and I figured it out. But I'm, I'm not too familiar with, with, with the hockey space or any of that. Um, but anyways, so um, from here and out, CM Punk ends up cutting the music during his entrance, and I thought damn that is savage because think about it you know obviously people are gonna be booing him there we already know that but i'm sure there was a couple of people that were like yeah you know really feeling it look into my eyes what do you see i uh, really feeling this bop and then cm punk's like nah you guys don't deserve this song uh 
really hilarious stuff, actually. So he's getting booed. He's going out there. He's got no music. And then finally, this match gets started with him and John Silver. I didn't think this match picked up until there was a sequence where uh, John Silver just goes like crazy. And he's just starts seeing CM Punk like he's a soccer ball. He doesn't see him as a human. He sees him as a soccer ball because he just starts like kicking him so fast. He's kicking him multiple times on the side. He's kicking him multiple times on the chest. Then he lands a brain buster. He goes for the pin. It's a near fall. Uh, So that was a really fun little uh, sequence there as well. And then, and then we get this moment where CM Punk has the audacity, the audacity to do the buckshot lariat. He hits it. He gets the win, and immediately they pan to a shot of uh, Adam Page, and he is freaking livid, okay? He is livid. He is pissed. Uh, this was really good. He uses the guy's move. Page goes down there, confronts him. They get face-to-face with each other, and uh, th- this was really hot, by the way. It was really good. I really like this. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of steam, a lot of energy there. Um, after this, Punk cuts a little bit of a promo and he basically tells Hangman Page that he's going to shit that at the end of Double or Nothing, he's going to that Hangman Page is going to essentially shake his hand. So I liked this. I really, really loved that CM Punk did the the Buckshot Lariat. It was such a... uh, it, it was it's like slapping a man in the face. It's like literally hitting a low blow to a man. It's like stealing his girl. It's just things you do not do. And CM Punk doing that was next level. So I really appreciated this. I'm really excited for their match. And this was just a fun little way to uh, spice things up a little bit. Good stuff here. But let's get what people are saying because we got some super chats in here. I'm loving this. We got a super chat from Sheldon Jackson who says, which AEW star should challenge for the IWGP? Jo- oh my God, you to- Oh my God. Okay, sorry, sorry. So Sheldon, you asked me this question on one of my other shows and I told you, oh yeah, remind me and I'm going to have an answer for you. <laughs> and I literally, I l- completely forgot to come up with my answer. Um, but I legitimately feel right now, Jesus, based off the current champions, I want to put a little bit more thought to this because I just don't know who I legitimately want right now. I legitimately do not know. I feel like there's so much happening, especially right now with the with the Owen Hart Cup and all of that kind of scene, like who ends up uh, exiting that tournament and who ends up becoming available and all of that good stuff. That's what I'm interested. Oh, wait, that tournament's going to end before. All right. So I'm really looking forward to it. I just don't exactly know just yet. Jesus. But we got a big, massive, holy Jesus, big super chat from Bridget Hewlett. Bridget says, this show rocked. I got hook housing. Uh, my day has been made. Uh, first of all, Bridget, you just made my night with this very kind and massive super chat. You have no idea how much I appreciate you. Um, seriously, Bridget. And uh, she's definitely right. This show rocked. Hookhausen is going to be a massive topic here tonight. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a hot minute. But guys, um, please, if you can, show some love to Bridget in the chat. I feel like I, I want to show her extra love for being very generous on the show. Uh, so please, if you can, give her a shout out here. Uh, shout out to Bridget Hewlett once again for the very kind uh, super chat here. Um, alrighty, guys. Uh, here we go. So let's go ahead and continue this on because we have quite a bit to talk about. After this, it's time to talk about Hook Housing. So, as you all know, we recently had this storyline on uh, was it on Rampage? Yeah, I was on Rampage. It completely, and I mean completely, like pulled all my heartstrings. I. I, I raved about it on that post show because I loved the interaction that they had where uh, where Hook pushes him and Dan Housen gives him the chips and it's in the bow. And oh, my God, uh, that whole entire thing was literally probably my favorite thing that I had seen in a very long time. So I was wondering, like, hey, how are they going to follow this up? Especially when that uh, that segment, I think, garnered a lot of people's like. It garnered a a reaction that I don't think you really get a lot of in wrestling. And so that was really cool to see. So we are wondering when exactly 
Hook was going to actually finally give in and open his heart up to Dan Housen. And it kind of looked like he did so today because we had Dan Housen making his in AW in ring debut against Tony Nese, one on one against Tony Nese. And this match literally it lasted seconds. Seconds, really. Dan Housen loses really quick after Tony Nese uh, gets him with a knee to the face, and it's done. This is so fast. If you blinked, you probably missed it. If you looked down on your phone, you missed it. If you were like me, like me, and you were tweeting, you had to rewind because you missed it. Um, and then after this, Tony Nese would not stop. He would continue giving a couple of knees to the face of Dan Housen, and then finally, the music hits. Hook comes out and everybody's like, woo, he's going to come to his rescue. Oh, my God. So he comes to his rest. Well, Tony Nese runs away. So it's a sort of a rescue because Tony Nese bounces before Hook even gets to the ring. And then after this, um, Hook and Dan Housen have a very simple moment. They shake hands. They shake hands, and this is the first time where we've seen Hook essentially acknowledge Dan Housen in a positive way because they've had these interactions before, and it's led to nothing but heartbreak. But not this time because they shook hands. And on top of this, they officially announced that at AEW Double or Nothing at the buy-in, we are going to be getting the team of Hook Housen. That is right. For the first time ever, Hook and Dan Housen are going to be teaming up together, and they're going to be facing Mark Sterling and Tony Nese. So this is a fun way to get them on the show, get them on the buy-in, uh, keep moving forward this story of Hook Housen. I think so far they've done a pretty good job. It's 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 been endearing, at least I would say. I really really hope that at AEW Double or Nothing they have Hook Housen t-shirts if they do not have Hook Housen t-shirts at Double or Nothing I'm telling you Tony Khan you're leaving money on the table make a really cute Hook Housen shirt I promise I promise there will be sales for sure uh this was a lot of fun guys this was a lot of fun I love it uh, let's get some thoughts in here, guys, and see what people are saying because we're getting some comments in here about this. And uh, Connor Delaney says, fun episode, better than last week. Everything was awesome. Uh, Major Blood says, this is amazing. I'm disappointed it was such a quick squash, but it led to a moment that literally everyone wanted. You got to give the people what they want. And now we're going to be seeing, look, Given that the show had so many more matches and so many matches that needed the time, I'm not like upset that this match ended really quickly just because there were other matches on the card that I feel needed more of the time. And there were some segments that, you know, took up a, a lot of time. They got a lot of, lot of, a lot of time. So, uh, so for this one to be short, I didn't think was too terrible. And at, and at the end of the day, now it keeps us wondering like, Hey, what is Dan Housen going to bring to the table when he finally teams up with hook? And how is that all going to play out? So I'm not too disappointed that it was a short match, but it, it was a very short Short match for sure. And uh, we got Andrew Tam, who was actually at the show at the UBS Arena and says that it was an amazing show. Andrew Cook says, I loved how they introduced Dan Housen as from somewhere far away. And uh, Justin Martin says, Dan Housen losing in 30 seconds was bizarre and shocking. At least it led to Hook Housen becoming a thing. So we all win. Power Driver Finisher sends in a comment saying, I, uh, I love that we didn't watch Dan Housen wrestle. Keep the fun in games. We always complain about more time for the women or certain segments. This is one of them for me. I don't mind, but keep it short. Uh, yeah, I have to agree on this particular show. I do agree because, like I said, there were other matches that I think uh, benefited from having a little bit of extra time. And let's say this match would have been like three minutes. That would have been three minutes taken away from, you know, somebody else, essentially. The, so another match that, you know, needed it more. We got a super chat from Christopher Marino. Thank you so much to Christopher who says, I can already hear the pop for the hook hot tag at double or nothing. Dude, dude. Um, and I'm going to be there for that. I'm very excited. Um, I think the crowd is going to like erupt, especially just with the, just, just the announcements, you know, just the announcements of like anything to hook Dan Housen related. You always hear the people behind the graphic going like, yeah. The pops are definitely there. Wrestling News says, I really want a Hook Housen t-shirt now. 
Agreed. ZMF89 says Hookhausen shirts will make all the monies. All the monies indeed. All righty, everyone. So there you go. That was your Hookhausen segment for the day. But now let's hop into what was a pretty lengthy segment, uh, considering that it was MJF's hometown. Uh, this was not surprising whatsoever. There was a lot in this here. So I'm going to do a very, very quick recap of this and then re- go right into it. So this was everything surrounding MJF and Wardlow. Now they kick things off fooling me. And I don't know how many people they fooled in this uh, watching the show, but I was legitimately fooled because they started off doing a dark side of the ring, uh, like a spoof, you know, like a mock of the trailer. And in the very beginning, when they showed the dark side of the ring, I thought, wait, is AW doing like a scoop on what the next dark side of the ring episode is going to be on? And I had a, I had like a quick like brain fart where I was like, wait, Dub, I'm like, they usually announce this stuff on Twitter or you see some sort of press release or something. And then like right away, you get the narration from Jericho where he's like, wait a minute. Is this is this for MJF? This and that. How much does MJF pay? Well, I'll continue doing it. So he realizes that this is a this was written by MJF. This is for MJF. This is essentially propaganda on behalf of MJF against Wardlow. And Jericho's just like, well, I'll keep doing it because, you know, he pays well or whatever. Uh, so I thought the concept of what they did here. So basically what they did was they showed the Wardlow MJF feud via the eyes of MJF. Like, but they formatted it like a dark side of the ring trailer or like, a, you know, a documentary trailer. Uh, so I really liked the idea. I thought it was different. I thought it was brilliant, actually. So whoever came up with it, whoever had the idea of promoting it like a dark side of the ring trailer, I think was on to the right thing because it came across as very creative. So I was a big fan of this, a big fan of this. I kind of want to, I, I know they can't do this like, every week, but I would like to see it down the line uh, once again, because that was really funny. Um, But they go there, they're doing the contract signing. They all go out there. Uh, Wardlow, when he comes out, he comes out with the security guards as always. He's handcuffed as always. And this time they added something new. They have the boo Wardlow on the chat on the Titan Tron. So they're instructing people to boo Wardlow. And so they start off this contract signing bless Bless Wardlow because he sat there for a very long time listening to MJF go on and on about a bunch of stuff, okay? He's having the people boo Wardlow. He's talking about how he's the mensch of the sench. He's uh, talking to the people, telling them to get up and start booing Wardlow. There's a very funny line because only MJF would give a backhanded compliment like this. He tells the people to get up and boo. And then he says, quote, allow me to reiterate this for the amazing people in the cheap seats. You're poor, but you're beautiful. Now, when he said you're poor, but you're beautiful, I felt that. I felt personally attacked, personally attacked and offended by MJF. And I wasn't even there. Uh, I think a lot of people felt that one there for sure. Um, After this, he starts talking about how uh, Wardlow's going to get the worst kind of karma, even mentions Cody Rhodes. Uh, From here on out, he even has a line where he says, oh, you don't want me to talk about 2024? That's funny. Neither does the guy in the back, implying Tony Khan not wanting to talk about his contract being up in 2024. After this, he basically says that MJF is, he says that Wardlow is going to have a steel cage match with Sean Spears with MJF as the referee. He says if he loses the match at double or nothing, that he is never going to be able to sign a contract with AEW ever again. So there you go. That's a whole other thing. On top of this, After this, we end up seeing the contract signing. MJF makes a big giant boo-boo, and he allows them to unhandcuff Wardlow. So they they take off the handcuffs, and Wardlow signs it. 
MJF's thinking nothing's going to happen. But of course, we all knew something was going to happen. So Wardlow goes crazy. He starts attacking the referee, the security guards again. He takes out everybody. MJF is hiding behind Sean Spears. And then after this, uh, he takes out Sean Spears. He finally gets his hands on MJF. He's about to powerbomb him onto the table, but Mark Sterling comes in and helps save MJF. And then he ends up finding himself through going through the table via powerbomb by Wardlow. So there was just a whole lot that went down in this. MJF was really feeling himself tonight, man. Uh, he was just going on and on during that promo. So I like this. This was good. They, I got to say the exact same thing I've been saying, but the presentation of Wardlow has been stupendous. It's been really good. They're making him look legit. They're making him look like a badass. They have to keep it going. Um, it really, really hits hard, too, when MJF is being such a douche and he calls him a pig. Man, even I get offended by that. When he calls Wardlow a pig, even I get offended. You feel that. You know, you feel it in your core. Uh, so it was good stuff all across the board. Board. I'm excited to continue seeing what they do with this here today. Uh, let's get some thoughts in here and see what people thought about uh, this whole thing with um, with MJF and uh, Wardlow. Andrew Cook says Long Island is clearly a large, insane asylum full of people obsessed with the MJF. But the dark side of the spoof was genius, uh, especially having Bar Barry Horowitz. Uh, can't wait for the next part of this story. And uh, let's get some more comments here. AFC and TP says can't believe they even got the actual dark side of the ring voiceover guy. Right? I hear he's hard to book. Uh, thank you, AFC and TP, for uh, making me laugh here today. And uh, let's get some more comments in here and see what people are saying. Sean, Sean says, poor and beautiful. That one spoke to me, too. A lot of people. We just we felt that one, guys. We felt that one. Uh, let's see what else we got. This is from Leonard Aarons, the third, who says AEW world champ MJF is going to be a mind blowing experience when it happens. He just keeps crushing it. And it's mind boggling to to think that he's this young and this great. Dude, he is going to get under our damn skin when he becomes champion. The day MJF becomes champion, he is going to annoy the hell out of all of us. And it's going to be madness. It's going to be madness. All right. Uh, let's keep this going, guys. Let's keep this going. There's so much going on here. Uh, Justin Martin says this whole segment was amazing. MJF's uh, self-indulgence, Spears doing the 10, Wardlow power bombing Sterling through the table. That was great. TV. ZMF89 says MJF going to beat Wardlow. Go on to beat Punk for the title. Then Wardlow going to beat MJF. Epic storytelling there. Robert Arsenal sends in a super chat. Thank you so much to Robert. Uh, who says... MJF is once again a generational talent. Tony really has to pay him CM Punk money and he will be worth it. Uh, I don't know about CM Punk money, but uh, definitely uh, definitely bring out them, them bills, though, for sure. Uh, thank you to Roberto Arsenal for always being so kind and sending in these super chats. Once again, guys, if you are watching the show and you want to help support the show, if you do send in a super chat, you for sure get your comment, question, or statement read on this podcast, and you also keep me well fed roofed etc <laughs> all right moving on from here after this we had a match that i was pretty much i was looking forward to this one uh two guys that i think i'm a fan of and i know a lot of people here are fans of this was for the ftw championship jungle boy challenging against ricky starks um this was a fine little match. It probably wasn't like the biggest. Uh, this one probably didn't stand out in comparison to all the other ones. I think we had a lot of other good matches on tonight's show. So this one wasn't like up there, but it wasn't bad whatsoever. Uh, right off the bat, we see Ricky Starks get a little, get a little mean, get a little cocky, slapping the back of Jungle Boy like he's trash. He's just like, hmm. You know, letting it out on him. Super kick from Jungle Boy goes for the pin. It's a quick near fall. We see Jungle Boy lock in the snare trap. And during the snare trap, I love the way that Ricky Starks was selling this. He was just like, 
You can see the veins popping out of his face, really, really selling the pain, and he barely gets the ropes with the fingertips. Um, This was good. I really liked the way that he barely got the ropes with the fingertips. You know, Jungle Boy has won a lot of matches with that snare trap, so I really like the way that they've been. Uh, they've really built it up a lot. Now, unfortunately, Swerve Strickland comes out, and he comes out because he sees that Ricky Starks is going for the belt. So he knows he's going to try to cheat. And Swerve, who's been feuding with Ricky Starks, doesn't want to see him cheat. But then this during this, we end up this ends up causing uh, the referee to get distracted. So when the referee gets distracted by Swerve inside the ring, we see Jungle Boy essentially get a visual pin on Ricky Starks. And then but the referee is not there to count it. So then after this, um, the referee, so finally Swerve is like telling the referee, like, dude, turn around, like, don't pay attention to me, turn around, you know, go look at that. But the referee's like, get out of here, la, 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 right? So he finally turns around and, you know, but by then it's too late. So after this, Ricky Starks hits the Rochambeau. Am I saying that right? Rochambeau. Yeah. And uh, he hits it. He, he gets the win and retains the FTW championship. This caused some drama for Swerve Strickland. Christian Cage, Luchasaurus, they come out. They're like, what the hell, dude? They start arguing with him, basically saying why you essentially costed him the match. He did. It was unintentional. Things got a little messy. And then afterwards, we see Keith Lee coming out. And what we end up getting at the end is all three teams essentially staring each other down. Uh, we did get this hug between Jungle Boy and Christian Cage. They've been teasing that for a bit, but the hug was just like, it just felt like a hug. It didn't feel like too much of a tease. I kind of thought they could have wrapped this. I think they could have wrapped this all up a little bit faster. The, I didn't think we needed everything that followed after the match. I think it could have been a lot quicker. Like they could have done everything, but just a little bit faster there. Um, but let's go ahead and see what people are saying in regards to this here. Uh, that's going to comment from Sean Williams, who says Christian Cage turning on Jungle Boy may be too obvious now. So I would have Jungle Boy turn and become Jungle Man. Maybe not Jungle Jack Perry. Yeah, <laughs> Jungle Man. I love it. I mean, we did see frustration from Jungle Boy. Uh, so maybe there could be that chance where he's just like, I'm done. I'm fed up. Becomes Jungle Man. I hope there's no puberty jokes made. Someone will make it. Hopefully I'm not the first one. Uh, and uh, let's see what else we got here. De La Razzi says, so what is this leading to? Are they adding Swerve and Lee to the championship match? They should. You had all three teams essentially staring each other off. Why else do that if it's not going to lead to something, right? Possibly. I feel like that's the only reason to do it. Jake Larson says there were some weird pauses after this match. I wonder the match went too short. I don't know. I feel like the, yeah, like the post-match stuff, it was all a little bit of like, because some of, one part was weird because you have Swerve, Swerve is walking backwards, right? And then Luchasaurus and Christian Cage, they like walk past him. I think if they were really upset, they wouldn't have walked past him and then had the argument. I think they should have like, Basically been like, what the hell, like right off the bat. So I think the placement of where everybody was at and how everything got set up was a little bit weird, but there was, it was not like too big of a deal, honestly. Um, all right, guys. And Major Blood mentions just because something isn't obvious doesn't mean they still shouldn't do it. Don't swerve for the sake of swerving. All righty. And now we're going to go ahead and hop into the Jericho Appreciation Society victory speech. But before I do, I want to let you guys all know that this Friday, um, I am going to be here. I had said on Tuesday's show that I wasn't going to be here on Friday. However, this Friday is going to be a little bit different. Normally, I cover Rampage and SmackDown. However, I'm going to be flying to Houston, Texas to do commentary for Mission Pro Wrestling. So I have to be on a plane by like 6 p.m. But... But there's a but. Uh, they announced that AEW Rampage is going to be having a start time of 2.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, which means Denise Salcedo will be able to watch. So I will be watching Rampage, and then I will be doing a 
30 minutes post show um, immediately following Rampage. And uh, then I have to leave because I'm going to basically leave to go catch a flight. So I will be here on Friday, even if it's just for 30 minutes. I will be here. On top of that, next week, next Wednesday for Dynamite, uh, it is going to be my birthday, May 18th, Wednesday. Next Wednesday is my birthday, and I'm going to be working. Woo! Um, So it is going to be my official birthday stream. Instead of going out, having a good time, I'm going to be here. Having a better a better time watching AEW Dynamite and doing my post show. So next week will be my birthday party stream, guys. Uh, so I hope you guys come through. I'll bring balloons. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We got a super uh, super show super chat. You would think I would finally know what a super chat is, right? I say it like a million times. Punk Rock Show 84 says, you need your own prime TV talk show. Uh, Feats talents of all entertainment Salcedo tonight. Best nighttime talk show in the history of our sports. Thank you so much for the very kind super chat. You made me uh, feel a lot more confident. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, I come out here and I just try to do the best show that I possibly can. And I appreciate it. All the love and support that I get from everybody that tunes in. Uh, also, for those of you guys who didn't notice, I'm starting a new thing too, where every week I make sure to thank. I want to thank the people that send in super chats uh, on the show now too, just besides like a quick shout out. So now before the stream, before every stream, I'm going to be posting those week's uh, super chatters on the graphic. If you missed it today, rewind to the beginning. You'll see it. It's there. So I'm going to keep track of all of that and um, trying to find more ways to thank and show everybody a little bit more love for sending those in because I feel like I need to show more appreciation. All right. So now the Jericho Appreciation Society victory speech. Um, this was this was all right. This is all right. Uh, Jericho comes out. He's going on and off. All the guys are going on and on and blah, blah, blah. Uh, honestly, the promo itself is not that great. There was one. There was just one line that I really liked. And it was the one where Chris Jericho basically said, quote, Besides, you have to stay home and take care of your wife, man. You got to make sure she feels better. And if she doesn't, just have her give me a call. As you all know, now Eddie Kingston's wife has been brought into this. If you miss Rampage, uh, Eddie Kingston called Chris Jericho when he was on commentary and basically told him that he's going to cause him as much pain as he caused his wife because she was distraught after uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society threw a fireball to her husband's face. And who would it be? Let's be real. Uh, so it's definitely getting a lot more personal. Immediately after this, uh, Moxley comes out and then Jericho is like, yeah, well, go take some more time off. Go on another sabbatical. And he basically tells him he doesn't have enough guys. Cue the music. The rest of the Blackpool Combat Club comes out. Club comes out. And he's still like, well, we still got one more man than you. But then immediately after, from behind, we have Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz who come from behind. They circle in the Jericho Appreciation Society, and they all play dodgeball. Just kidding. They all brawl. Um, so this was fine. This was fine. Uh, the, the Jericho promo was okay. I didn't think it was one of his best ones. He's had better promos. This was nowhere near some of his other promos. So to me, there wasn't as much to highlight for this. Um, but I liked that we are incorporating the Blackpool Combat Club into this. Uh, I feel that the more... Because the Blackpool, the Blackpool Combat Club, I feel for the most part, has been kind of just been with guys, you know, kind of wrestling a bunch of like mid-carters, really not doing anything to me that at least felt interesting. So this, to me, now including them in this, felt a little bit more special. It felt a little bit more on the level that the BCC should be in. This felt more of an important uh, story for them. And now, uh, oh yeah, and uh, we have this, Sam Fine says, I'll throw a fireball at you because I'm a wizard. And let's get some comments in here. This one's from Roberto who says, love this segment. Danielson would destroy Daniel Garcia for choosing to be an entertainer. I uh, can't wait to see that. Andrew Cook says, initially, I was looking forward to Jericho Appreciation Society getting on Dynamite again, though it was just stealing the time for matches. But BCC coming in and changed my mind. Now I'm looking forward to JAS getting stomped. Uh, yeah, I feel like if it's, I, I think the promo could have been better. I didn't really feel like there was much. For that, but it's fine. 
ZMF says Bridget Appreciation Society. Hell yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um, all right. Now, moving on from here. Uh, let's see. They play a video package promoting Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa. Guys, they need to do more. They need to do more with Thunder Rosa. She's literally the AEW Women's Champion. We should be seeing her there on the show. They could have done, I don't know, an attack or something backstage. Maybe Serena Deeb attacks her. I don't know, something. I didn't feel like, I feel like this little package that they did, this could have been done on Rampage or something. Um, this was not Dynamite. Uh, cool. <sighs> They, they could have done a little bit more, I think, to really spice up this feud with Serena Deeb and Thunder Rosa. Like right now, people are, I would say people are interested in this feud only because, you know, you legitimately have two really good wrestlers. And at the end of the day, it's for the AEW Women's World Championship. But I truly feel that they can do more to just add more depth to the story. And on top of that, get your champion featured on the show. Uh, I don't like that this is uh, that she's not being featured as much. Um, um, the, unfortunately, the start of her reign had a little bit of a rocky start. So I want them to kind of, you know, pick up, pick up the, the, the pace there, you know, make, make her, she should be out there, you know, mm, with the people. Let's see what people are saying. This is from ZMF89, who says they really do need to do more with Thunder. It feels like since she came in, they have no idea what to do with her. It does feel like that. Uh, Unfortunately, they recycled the same thing with the, you know, starting her off with Nyla Rose. Um, I think that Serena Deep should have been her first challenger right off the bat. I get that they still had to finish things off with her and Hikaru Shida. I get all of that, but I do think that uh, they needed to start uh, they needed to start Thunder Rosa's feud a lot better. And now they need to really just feature her on the show. They need to keep giving re people reasons to cheer for their babyface AEW Women's World Champion. She is a babyface. She should be out there. She, dude, she could have gotten attacked from behind. Anything, anything, you know. Uh, Serena Deeb has been uh, basically portraying herself as this mad woman in this feud with Hikaru Shida. Have her be a mad woman. Have her unfairly attack Thunder Rosa. I don't know, just anything to like get them doing something here. Um, so let's see what else we got here. And um, it, it, it's been, I know we have a lot of uh, people uh, talking about, um, you know, a lot of the, 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 you know, comparing this to Britt Baker, also Hikaru Shida, you know, some of your former champions, etc. And I see for the most part, a lot of people sort of agreeing that they need to do a little bit more um, with uh, Rosa here. Uh, Kevin Bailey writes in a comment saying, I feel like AEW is setting up Rosa to fail with her reign the way she has been featured. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, like there, I will tell you, like this week, the Oh God, I think it was last week when Thunder Rosa had that promo that she did. There were a lot of, I, I, I quote tweet, I basically put an image and I put a little quote of what she said, the line that we all uh, assumed that was uh, meant for Becky Lynch, right? So I put that, man, you guys should have seen some of the comments in that. It was not good. And the reason like the comments were not good is what I'm trying to get at. And the reason for that is I don't think that they've, done everything necessary to let her be the the per like she's so over with people like let her be that now that she's champion you know like they had that building up to her championship run uh to her becoming champion that she had it and then they kind of just you know they need to utilize it a lot more let thunder rosa go out there and win the people over because she can do it um so there we go let's go ahead and continue on from here uh, let's see. After this, we got, um, Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm. This was part of the Women's Owen Hart Cup tournament. And, um, Jesus, this was pretty good, guys. This was pretty good. Uh, this is one of the matches that I was really looking forward to because I mentioned the, what was it? The six woman match that we had. I think it was on Rampage. Sorry, guys. Sometimes all these shows become a blur. And, uh, 
we had this interaction with Jamie and Tony Storm. And I remember coming out here and being like, damn, I'm so happy that they made this a matchup in the tournament because these two girls are aggressive. And they were aggressive in this match too. It was it was not too long, but it was a, a good, we got a lot in, the, in a good amount here. Uh, first of all, I never really paid attention to Jamie Hayter's theme song. Maybe I haven't heard it as much as some other people, but damn, today was the first day I actually paid attention to it. That thing's a banger. I was like, yeah, I'm feeling myself here. Uh, good stuff. Uh, they exchange shops, chops, shops. They do not exchange shops. They exchange chops. Uh, Jesus. Uh, they exchange chops. We have two freaking awesome DDTs from Tony Storm. One which she does in the ring and then one that she does outside of the ring the one that she did outside of the ring i was like jesus christ woman that thing looked painful uh that was a brutal one headbutt from jamie now i don't know why but i've never said this because i didn't really think about this before but the headbutt is probably one of my favorite things to see in a wrestling match I don't know what it is, man, but a headbutt gets me fired up. Every, I think everybody has that, like, move or something that people do that gets them a little extra fired up in matches. For me, it's the headbutt. Once you got a headbutt going in there, I'm like, yeah, this is good, you know? Um, Tony Storm hits the Storm Zero, and she gets the win, and she advances in this tournament. Uh, makes sense, because Tony Storm is a little bit on a different level than Jamie Hayter, so this is fine. Uh, we got a nice little, you know, intro to Jamie Hayter. We've seen her wrestle now a bit, but, you know, we still haven't seen her enough on Dynamite and Rampage, so I would still consider this somewhat of an intro uh, to Jamie Hayter and what she can do in the ring. So, um, this was good. Let's see what we got here. Adam Bull says they built this up for a month, and it went, like, eight minutes. ZMF says hard-hitting affair it was. Jamie's gonna be a megastar. Uh, Tony gonna Tony. <laughs> Tony gonna Tony. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, this is from Darth Steven, who says, I really like this match. I, match. I wish AEW would have been would have more than one women's match a week. I mean, this is constantly something that we're always talking about. So, um, yeah. I can't say that I don't agree because I definitely agree. Also, Steven. Guys, Steven was the winner of my pizza giveaway this weekend. Was it this weekend? Yeah, it was this weekend. For WrestleMania Backlash. Uh, I'm a lot in my head, guys. I forget stuff. But, uh, bro, he was freaking having the time of his life. He posted a picture with all the pizza. I was so jealous because I've been dieting. I was like, damn it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, thank you so much for entering. Uh, I am going to be doing daily giveaways from now until my birthday on my Twitter. There's a giveaway going up there right now. I'm doing a Shop AEW uh, gift card for $25. And I was going to pick one winner, but it got so many retweets. So I'm going to end up doing two winners on that. Um, so that's going to be going for the next couple of hours. Tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys all a scoopsy on my giveaway. Uh, tomorrow's giveaway, everybody, on Twitter is going to go up at some point in the morning tomorrow i'm gonna be giving away uh, a, uh the smack talk showdown playing card game and also the lewd edition card game both of those are gonna be in a bundle and uh somebody's gonna win it and then the day after i got some more cool stuff lined up i've been chatting with people i'm like Let's get your products. Let's get them out there. Uh, so keep an eye out on my Twitter account. I'm doing lots of giveaways there. Uh, we got a very nice super chat from Albert Ponce. Thank you so much, Albert. He says, Tony versus Jamie could be a good feud. Give both TV time. Give them more TV time. I agree with you. Um, this is something like, I think they could have, like, if, if we're going to cut anything on this show, I probably would have taken maybe like a minute or so off of this Jericho Appreciation Society stuff and maybe given it to this match uh, because it was a good match. And I think, again, a couple more minutes, it would have been even better. But there was still really good stuff in this, though. I don't want to make it feel like like it wasn't good because it was good. Um, so I want to make sure that if it, it got it gets enough appreciation. Uh, thank you so much to Albert for also sending in this super chat. Um, Alrighty, so now let's see after this. Let's get into uh, the matches that have been announced for some of the shows, and then we'll get into the main event because there's a lot to discuss for the main event. Um, also, here we go. AEW Rampage this Friday, which, again, I will be here recapping. We got the Owen Hart Cup uh, women uh, match. We got Riho versus Ruby Soho. 
Jade Cargill and the baddies are going to speak. Ooh. TNT Championship on the line. Scorpio Sky defends it against Frankie Kazarian. We also have the Death Triangle versus the Butcher and the Blade and Mark Quinn. That should be fun. And then we also have Sean Spears versus Bear Boulder. That's going to be taking place this Friday. The next week for my birthday, for my birthday stream. Uh, let's see. We got Chris Jericho and William Regal face to face. Owen Hart Cup match, Kyle O'Reilly versus Ray Phoenix. Please give me a banger there. We have both Joker matches. So we have the women's for the Owen Hart Cup, Britt Baker versus the Joker. We don't know who the Joker is going to be just yet. Uh, we also have Samoa Joe versus the Joker, who, again, we don't know who it's going to be yet. So we're going to have a lot to talk about. We also have uh, Take Sheeta, who's returning, and he's going to be facing Hangman Page. We also have Wardlow's 10 Lashes from MJF. And then the Owen Hart Cup again, uh, Adam Cole versus uh, versus uh, Jeff Hardy here because he's going to face the winner of that match, which was Jeff Hardy. So I can update now and put Jeff Hardy. And then um, nothing new for the AEW Double or Nothing lineup for the main card, only the buy-in, uh, which is Hook and Dan Housen versus Tony Nese and Mark Sterling, which we talked about already. And then besides that, we just have the championship matches, Paige and Punk. Uh, Thunder and Serena and there still hasn't been more matches added just yet but now guys this is it here we go we got the uh, main event to talk about this was good stuff man uh, we had Owen the, uh, for the Owen Hart Cup obviously they made this anything goes Darby Allen versus Jeff Hardy and I don't know guys I feel like Bubble the Clown because I don't know what I was expecting. Like, I was expecting a good match, right? But I wasn't expecting all of this. Like, all of these crazy spots. Uh, I don't think they had announced anything goes prior. Because I heard about it first on the show. So, unless they announced it prior, I'm sorry. I only heard about it when they were doing it. Uh, when they said it on commentary that it's going to be anything goes. So, I was not expecting all of these crazy spots. Which, you know, again, I feel like Bubble the Clown. Because I should have expected Um all of these crazy freaking spots like this was essentially Darby Allen coming out there and saying or both Darby Allen and Jeff Hardy really giving it their all and saying like we are two guys that are known for being fearless for doing crazy things for doing things that uh normal people just wouldn't do and now we're here together so we can pretty much do anything you know Darby is down to do anything and Jeff Hardy has done just about it all. So when you get two guys with that mentality in the ring together, uh, shit's going down, all right? That's exactly what happened here. Um, let's see what we got, man. Let's recap some of these spots because they were there was some that I was like, ooh. Um, right off the bat, Tope from uh, freaking um, Darby Allen to Jeff Hardy. He does the dive. Goes right out there. And the first camera angle from the right, like the right angle of the camera, it looks like Darby's head went right into the chest of Jeff Hardy. But then we get the other camera angle, which was the left side. And then you realize that it was actually like his shoulder. But regardless, it looked brutal because you just, it's literally like just seeing two bodies collide. And that's what we ended up seeing. So, uh, you know, two different versions from the camera angles, but uh, still pretty good. Uh, immediately, we see Darby Allen set up the, the, uh, the chairs. If Darby Allen was booked for mu for birthday parties. He would set up those musical chairs very fast because he did it very quickly. Uh, there's a moment where they have the uh, steel steps on the outside of the ring. Darby Allen literally flies over the steel steps and immediately... Uh, once he's on the other side, we see Jeff. We see Jeff Hardy leap off those steel steps and then clotheslines uh, Darby Allen. So that was kind of cool because you see one guy go first and then you see the other guy go. Uh, so that was a really nice little moment there. Then Jeff Hardy takes out the ladder. After this, Darby and we go to a picture in picture. So during the picture in picture, I'm seeing them set this spot up and I'm seeing Jeff Hardy already climbing up the ladder and i'm like bro they better not do this in the picture and picture but lo and behold they didn't and once we came back from the picture and picture we ended up seeing darby go to the top now this was a tall tall ladder and the ladders 
in the ring and they have the chair set up on the outside. So Darby goes to the very top of the ladder and does a swanton on to Jeff Hardy, onto the chairs. It was brutal, mainly because it was so high up. Then on top of this, Darby immediately does a coffin drop to Jeff Hardy, who's positioned on the on you know the the, the apron of the ring. You know he's positioned like right at the edge, and Jeff Hardy moves. So you end up just seeing Darby Allen go right into the right into the right into the ring. That's it. He just hits the mat, and it was kind of brutal because again, it's the edge of the ring, so that literally goes like right into like his spinal cord like it was disgusting you had this moment where you're just like damn bro uh jesus and when i didn't think that moment could be topped i was wrong i was so wrong because all of a sudden it looked le- it looked didn't look as painful because jeff hardy then does a swanton onto uh darby allen who's positioned on the steel steps, but Darby ends up moving out of the way. And so Jeff just goes right into the steel steps, man. And that one was really painful. I kind of felt a little like, I felt a little bit, uh, I would say uncomfortable, but I felt for Jeff Hardy. You know, he's an older guy. He, you know, he's not Darby Allen's age. Uh, so you do kind of feel a little bit like, damn, that's that was massive. But at the same time, you're like, oh, shit, that was cool. So it was like two parts of me fighting, like concerned mother on one side and then death match exhilaration Denise on the other side. So um, this was good. We ended up seeing Jeff Hardy get the win here. Uh, this was a whole lot of fun. It, we got a lot more than I think a lot of us expected during this match. Fun stuff, guys. Uh, he moves on in the tournament, and I'm going to pull up the brackets right now. But I also, we got a super chat from Nick Grosso. Thank you so much to Nick, who says, Darby should have won. No reason for Jeff to win. Just made him and his finisher look bad. Um, I think that a lot of people were expecting Darby to win. I really do think Darby was the person that most people were expecting to win. I didn't know which way they were going to go, but when I did my predictions last week, I was expecting for us to see Darby and Adam Cole. So clearly that's not happening. Um, So now, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't... I think I was like 70, 30, like 70% of me was expecting Darby to win and maybe like 30% for Jeff Hardy to win. So uh, that was a little bit surprising, but we'll see. Albert Ponce says, new to the channel. Love your work. Happy birthday. Uh, Thank you. My birthday's next week, but I will take the happy early birthday. Uh, Albert also says, Riho versus Ruby is tough. Both are great, but man, Ruby deserves a push. Um, Main event was a lot of fun. Agreed on the main event. Uh, Ruby, Ruby kind of had, you know, she went in there. She, she debuted in AEW. She had a lot of massive moments. You know, they got to, she got to work with Britt Baker. They got to main event. Uh, they got to do a lot of cool stuff, but uh, we haven't really seen much since then. So I do see what you mean, like deserving a push and all of that, but there's still a lot of women out there uh, on the roster that uh, I would say also deserve a push, right? Like there's a lot of people, but Albert, thank you so much for being so generous and sending in the super chat. I appreciate it. Really, I do. Uh, let's get some more comments in here. This is from Dale who says, I'm going to be honest. I was scared for Jeff. Like I thought in one of those bumps, he wasn't going to get up. I felt the same way, man. My my mother side came out of me uh, during that spot on the steps. Honestly, I was a little bit like, oof. Um. Sean Williams says, fun show, wrong winners in pretty much every match. I wanted Dax to win, but understand why he didn't. Hater and Darby over Storm and Hardy. Uh, so already things are going uh, differently in the um, in the uh, tournament here than we expected. Sean says, they probably had such extra pressures on themselves to do over-the-top shit based on their reputations. This is true. This is true. Like, there was, when that, when Darby did the spot off the ladder... I thought he did it because maybe they weren't wanting to have Jeff do it. But then, you know, Jeff's already done crazy stuff in AEW. So it's not like he hasn't done anything crazy in AEW. But I thought, okay, maybe it's just going to be Darby doing, being the one that takes all the, like those crazy bumps, right? And then, you know, he was the one that did the coffin drop right onto the ring. And so I thought, okay, it's going to be Darby. But then that one spot with Jeff Hardy, I was like, damn. But dude, it's Jeff Hardy. That's who he is. Um, if he wants to do it, he wants to do it, right? what you can do what can you what can you do um i agree 
They are effing nuts. Uh, let's see what else we got. We got more people. A lot of people I, I feel um, right now in the chat are a little bit more um, maybe not so on board with Jeff Hardy going out there and just being crazy. But it's Jeff Hardy. That's who he is. And I, you know, like Sean said it best earlier, basically saying that, you know, that's his reputation. That's what he's known for going out there and doing crazy stuff. And then you also have to think about it this way. Like, yeah, he's like twice the age of Darby Allen, right? But it's almost like you don't want to, if you're known for that and you're the person who, you know, somebody like a Darby looked up to, you're not going to want to go out there and not do something crazy, right? So I'm trying to see it from like the perspective of Jeff Hardy. And it's not like he hasn't done crazy stuff in AEW. Like literally he just did the freaking swanton off the, off the ladder onto, um, I forgot who on the freaking uh, table. Uh, so that was crazy too. When they did that in the concessions area, all of that. Uh, so it's not like he hasn't done crazy stuff. But as Sam Fine says, yeah, I mean, we all respect and appreciate it. We can still also be like, dude, chill out. I think had he did, had he landed on Darby and it would have been, I think maybe it would have been a little bit less like, ah, but because he landed straight onto the steel on the steps, it's kind of like, you know, it's a little bit more like nerve wracking, I guess. Marlock says, Jeff knows what he's doing. Well, um, let's see if we got any more other comments. If not, let's go ahead. Actually, let me pull up this bracket here, guys, because we need to check out these brackets. Um, so for the women, Tony Storm's moving on. Uh, given that we still don't know who the Joker is, we can't really safely say who we think it's going to be, but I'm pretty sure it's going to be Tony Storm versus whoever the Joker is, because I'm not expecting the Joker to be eliminated in the first, in the first match, right? Like, you're not, we're not expecting that. For the men's, um, we're going to be getting Jeff Hardy versus Adam Cole. So that should be fun. Although everybody wanted to see Darby versus Adam Cole, but Jeff Hardy with, versus Adam Cole will be uh, a different type of match, but a fun match. I'm expecting Adam Cole to defeat Jeff Hardy and make it there to the finals. On the left side of the bracket, it's still hard to tell because, again, uh, we still don't know who the Joker is. And I can't imagine Samoa Joe losing, but I also can't imagine the Joker losing. So... But then I don't want I don't want to see both Jokers win on both tournaments. So um, I have a feeling Samoa Joe might actually defeat the Joker. So I think they're going to have the Joker lose on the men's side and have the Joker on the women's side win. Just so they won't be so similar, right? Um, all righty. And there you guys go. That was the show here today. Um, as always, thank you guys so much for coming in. I hope you guys had a good time. If you did, please leave a nice comment in after this video, leave a comment in the actual comments, uh, so that more people can find this show. It helps out the algorithm. Give a like, subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And then I will be back here on Friday for a super early stream. And it's only going to be 30 minutes long, but we're going to do it. And it's going to be a rampage only stream. So it'll be a good time. Alrighty, everyone. Thank you so much. I will see you next week for my birthday stream. Bye, everybody. Take care.